everybody and welcome to the XP Classic Jets channel where I talk about simulating classic jet airliners in X-Plane. Hello folks, welcome to another stream. This is going to be a very short one, not like the uh, the mega hour long episodes about scenery design. Um, I thought this time I'd just um, show you a little bit of work that I've been doing with uh, air manager panels for the Felis 747-200. And um, just to reiterate, these uh, these panels, these instruments, they all work using Air Manager made by Sim Innovations, which is uh, essentially a plugin that works not only with X-Plane, but uh, with the other flight sims, but I only use X-Plane, so as far as I'm concerned, X-Plane. And essentially what it does is it takes data out of X-Plane, data in the form of data refs and you can throw those data refs around a network um, wherever you want them and then a manager will take those data refs and based upon whatever coding you have uh, you've done for instrumentations it will then allow you to present that data those data refs in the form of instruments and panels so what you'll see here in the the window at the uh, top left in the background is a screenshot of um, the Felis 742 running within within X-Plane. I'll just um, stick a little bit of throttle in there just so you can see the, um, the dials moving just to prove that it, it is live. And then in the foreground is my air manager panel for the center panel on the 747-200. And as you'll see, it is a little bit different because um, I decided to have a go at doing tape instruments and this is a, a few days work uh, we're probably about 70 um, 70 percent of uh, 70 percent of the way there there's a few little bits and bobs to finish off the background image hasn't been worked on as you can still see from inboard and outboard there from the old uh, the old circular flap gauges but uh, let me stick a wee bit of flap in and you can see the um, the, the tape gauges there uh, the, or the tapes rather just moving and you can probably see the uh, the the flat gauges in um, on the feelers uh, moving as well so then we've got the engine instruments uh, in fact because the the tape displays take up less space uh, we can show n2 as well as n1 on the uh, on this panel whereas the the uh, the standard Dial type gauges only show uh, EPR, uh, EPA, uh, N1, EGT, and and uh, and the fuel flow. So let's just um, throw some power in. Not worrying too much about what I'm doing, but let's um, let's take it up. We'll get the uh, takeoff config horn going in a minute. Oh no, we won't because we've got flap set. That's why. Let's uh, just get flap flap ten selected there. Um, and. Uh, take the power up to maximum uh, up to up to the uh, the EPR limit and let's pull the power off and there we go down it down it goes now these gauges here are modeled upon those which I think must have been fitted to the aircraft when new because airlines like TWA had had this style of gauge fitted there is a a retro um, a retrofit uh, upgrade available it was originally done by a company called Penny and Giles I think they were and then they became Spyrent and Northwest Airlines bought that system it was a two LCD uh, screen fit fitted basically where those um, where, where where all these tape gauges are at the moment had two screens on it uh, two LCD screens and uh, I've actually started work on that as well, but uh, that's a, a little bit further down the line, although not not too far behind. Um, but I, I, I may, <coughs> excuse me, I may offer that as an option. Although, to be honest, I think what I'll do is just run with the the, the standard um, two screen display. You can uh, you can also have it set so that all the tapes are shown on one display and then the other display can show actual readouts or um, one of the things Northwest had was they could record the first three minutes 
of the flight so that all the takeoff and climb parameters on the engines were recorded and that basically saved them a whole load of hassle uh, with with engine management because if there were any exceedances they could they could see exactly what the exceedances were uh, how much of an exceedance there was and how long it lasted for that then allowed them to to catch serious exceedances which required the engines to be uh, taken off wing but it also meant that where there was a very brief and very minor exceedance um, it could be looked at without the need potentially for a shop visit and that saved them a whole load of money because the moment you you take an engine off wing and send it away to the shop doesn't matter whether you know whatever you think might be wrong with it you're always going to find something else wrong with it and it's going to cost you a fortune so um, so they use that system and I, I just saw some very old news reports uh, on um, on the web that uh, it was saving them a, a you know several million a year that re retro system I think came in in the 2000s uh, but certainly this style this tape style that that uh, that you can see here it was around in the 70s and TWA had it in the 70s couple of interesting points I'll just mention before I before I go Th these are unfinished the EPR gauge in particular is unfinished uh, I've been thinking about this there are a couple of different styles of display um, some which have the commanded EPR limit um, shown on the gauge itself and the um, the manual EPR set knob then in in the center one of the things with the Felis does is Felis, I believe, um, only only allows you to set EPR limits versus the thrust computer. So if I just change the um, that there, that's to uh, max continuous, max climb, max cruise, and go around. You can't actually manually set. Uh, the EPR limits and if I go up to the gauges although he's got um, he's showing the knobs there to allow manual set you can't actually do it they don't do anything so what I might do is within Air Manager uh, is, is write some code that allows you to manually set your EPR limits yeah I, I, oh, I don't know I, I, I might do that and then and, and then we can get this functioning a little bit more as it as it should do. Uh, I, I guess what I could do is put a where, where the, the the auto um, EPA limit uh, on light is, which it is at the moment because of course with the Felis it it is in auto mode. It it can only be set via the thrust computer. That I might make that a click spot that allows you to then manually select your your max EPR so you could go off the charts for example and um, and, and and set that I, I, I just got to think about it it's it's one of those one of those weird things that because of a couple of limitations on Felis I, I it's only been thrown up because I've been doing these gauges but uh, but we'll we'll get there there's a few other things maybe just to note um, there are there are so many different engine variants that some of the scales vary uh, this n1 gauge is based upon a swiss air uh, gauge and you can see it's slightly different to the the n2 scale twa's had the n1 and the n2 scales identical so i might do that just as a as an option um, i've got fuel flow here in kilos kilos per hour the only pounds per hour gauges that I can find go up to 20,000 pounds per hour. Now the Felis gauge goes way past that as you can see goes up to 27,000 pounds per hour and actually if you if you throw in let's just take it up the max you can see it's really going there we've got 23,000 pounds per hour per engine uh, fuel flow so it would be off the top of the tape scale if I stuck with 20,000 pounds per hour. Now I can't find anything other than 20,000 pounds per hour so I don't know whether it just went up to the top and stuck or 
whether I should fudge a gauge that goes up to say 25 uh, just change the, the scale slightly and then it'll actually display what the you know what what the feeders are showing so again just a, another little little weird thing then night lighting stuff like that I've got to add that in and just make a few tweaks and and um, uh, change the color of the bezels I'll get those to more to match the um, the the flat display here but uh, it's coming along quite nicely and I, I think it's it's really quite a quite a nice change one of the things that that I actually found quite useful in practice is that it's very very easy to see if there's a change in um, engine operating parameters on, on on an engine and there we go I've just um, that's it I've just um, selected cutoff on the number four and you can see that that tape has just gone straight down so there's a an, an instant notification that that number four engine is not performing as it as it should do and uh, it's to, to my mind it's a lot easier to see than the than the circular gauges but there we go I'm starting to uh, I'm starting to waffle on I I hope that within a week or so or two weeks uh, I'll have I'll have this to the stage where I'm where I'm happy with it to to release it and anyone who's uh, already bought the the 747-200 panels thank you very much for doing so I hope you're enjoying them um, I'll make these available to you so that you've got uh, yet more options to expand expand your cockpit and then when the Penny and Giles uh, displays come up and actually I'll, I'll I'll show you a quick screen shot of that uh, of that working but when the Penny and Giles screens are finished I'll make them available as well right that's it for now um, thank you very much hope uh, hope you've enjoyed this and um, hopefully we'll uh, we'll see you again soon thank you very much thanks for watching cheers bye here we go here's a quick uh, quick preview of what the penny and giles or spirant instruments look like just the epr working the n1 gauge isn't um isn't hooked up yet but i just uh, i just wanted to get the graphics graphics working but the scale isn't the tape scale isn't uh, isn't isn't correct but um that'll be the the second option available and there's also a uh, a right screen. There we go. Which shows N2, EGT, and uh, and fuel flow on the right.